Welcome back. One final point before we go tonight. Al Gore's inconvenient truth is coming back to bite him. Not exactly the story Al Gore planned to propagate this week as his self-serving sequel premieres, a movie that follows the former vice president around the world while he lectures other people on how to preserve energy and fight climate change. Funny, though, how nowhere in the documentary does Mr. Gore mention that his gigantic house in Nashville, Tennessee, burns through 21 times more energy than the average American home. Yup. You know what that means? If Mr. Do As I Say, Not As I Do lived like we the sorry people, the amount of energy he burns through in one year could keep our homes powered for 21 years. Let me put it a different way. The amount of energy I'll use to power my home in my entire lifetime, say 80 years or more, knock on wood, would only fuel Al Gore's house for four years. Oh, and that's just one of his houses, by the way. He has two others. Terrible, huh? Well, that's not all. In order to heat his outdoor pool in the past year, Gore gobbled up enough energy to power six more average American homes for a full year. Let me translate here. Mr. Gore is all threats and no action. I believe that's what we call a hypocrite in mainstream America. I guess in government, that's just another day at the office. Perhaps Al Gore should edit the name of his documentary and rename it An Inconvenient Ruse. What's fit for me is not fit for thee. Meanwhile, none of the dire predictions preached by Gore and his ilk over the past 30 years, none of them have come true. We still have polar bears. The polar ice caps are still floating up north. We did not die from an ice age by the year 2000. Our food sources, not extinct, nor are we all starving due to frigid temperatures. We have not in the Western world resorted to cannibalism due to these predicted food shortages. England still exists. It's neither Siberian nor underwater. The 50 million climate refugees expected to be fleeing the Pacific Islands and flooding the West are still nowhere to be seen, not a single one of them. California is not flooded with inland seas. The Netherlands is still habitable. Children still know what snow is. Nor are we experiencing the supposed climax of severe weather Mr. Gore pretends is threatening the very existence of our planet. The truth, inconveniently for Mr. Gore, is we have suffered no devastating increases in raging fires or crippling droughts nor powerful storms. In fact, just the opposite. Wildfires have plummeted by 15% since 1950, and the United Nations themselves admitted global droughts have become less frequent, less intense, and shorter. Tornado counts in the past five years are at record lows, and we've hit a record of 11 years straight without a major Category 3 or more hurricane. Yet, oddly enough, Mr. Gore is still clamoring for us to fork over our money to him, or else, as he preaches, doom and gloom will flood the earth. Some questions worth asking Mr. Gore during his press tour, none of his press posse dare to ask, so I will. Mr. Gore, why do you dare tell us the world is going to end if we don't reduce our energy consumption when your own carbon footprint is the size of the Grand Canyon? Mr. Gore, why do you believe you're the only person on earth who can fix that problem? Perhaps is that because you invented the problem in the first place? Now, Mr. Gore, I'd like to ask you these questions myself, but any time a real journalist gets within 10 yards of you, you abscond to your gas-guzzling fleet of SUVs before any reporters have a chance to cage you. How inconvenient for the truth. And that's my final point. You can reach me on Twitter at Liz underscore Wheeler. If you liked the show, please send me an email at oann.com slash contact. In the meantime, catch us here tomorrow at 9 p.m. Eastern. And until then, have a good night.